This episode is brought to you by pastasworld.com, where you can find jigsaw puzzles, coffee and tea mugs, canvas and poster prints, iPhone cases, and more. You can even order custom items with your own pictures. Go to pastasworld.com or the Pastas World shop on Etsy to learn more. You're listening to I Love This TV Show, The Golden Girls. Hi, and welcome to the I Love This TV Show podcast. I'm your host, Noelle from pastasworld.com. Each season of this podcast will contain a TV show in full. This means the length of the season depends on the length of the TV show. The first season is, of course, The Golden Girls. The Golden Girls, Season 1, Episode 8, Break-In. The girls have come back from a Madonna concert. When they get home, they see that they've been robbed. Dorothy sees that the door to the patio is how they got in. She isn't sure if they are still there or gone, so she tries to scare them by talking about a gun, only she describes it incorrectly. Dorothy. This is a three seventy five Magnum, one of the most powerful handguns in the world. It could blow your head off. The only problem is, I don't remember if I shot four rounds or five. So you have to ask yourself, do you feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Sophia. Go ahead. Make her day. <laughs> Sophia heads off to her room. Dorothy announces that the robbers are gone, and she also heads off to check her room. Blanche hugs her Chinese vase and then runs to the kitchen. Rose is left alone in the living room. She's really freaked out and afraid. She tries to give herself a peck talk, but Dorothy puts her hand on her shoulder and scares her half to death. Rose, I'm fine. I'm just fine. There's nothing to be afraid of. These things happen every day. The main thing is, nobody was hurt. We could have been here. They could have come in the middle of the night while we slept. They could have crept up on us and cut our throats. Now look, Dorothy. Rose, ah! Dorothy, what? Rose, I thought you were the killers. Dorothy, relax, relax. I call the police. Dorothy discovers that her mink stole has been stolen. Blanche comes out of the kitchen upset that her jewels have been stolen as well. She kept them in flour and in the freezer. Rose thinks they were looking for drugs. Dorothy gets annoyed and points out that they only have estrogen and Maalox. Rose, they were probably looking for drugs. Dorothy, we have Maalox and estrogen. Now how many junkies have gas and hot flashes? Sophia returns and tells them that all her clothes have been stolen. Dorothy is quite suspicious. Rose thinks they got robbed because there are no men in the house. Blanche thinks it's karma, but not her karma. Sophia calls it a night and goes to bed. Dorothy dispels both their theories. Dorothy heads to her room. Blanche goes on a rant. It's another day, and they have a salesman over regarding an alarm system. Dorothy refuses to let him bully them. They start to bicker about ways to protect themselves. Dorothy loses her patience with the salesman and his scare tactics, and she throws him out. Dorothy, okay, okay, we're getting the basic system. Salesman, whatever. Dorothy, but not from you, from your competitor. Salesman, what? Dorothy, because what you were trying to do was terrify us into spending more money than we have. Now get out of here before the victim of violent crime in this house is you. They discuss how they were safer with men. Dorothy points out that it's false security. Blanche tells a story about when noises would scare her. Dorothy decides to make her dinner. However, there's a guard dog in the kitchen. Everyone's afraid of it and everyone's afraid to go in the kitchen because of the guard dog. Dorothy decides to call the kennel and have them pick up the dog. Meanwhile, Sophia decides to go in the kitchen anyway, dog or no dog. Blanche and Rose start screaming for Dorothy. They are petrified. Sophia comes up just fine. The dog didn't attack. It hid and it peed on the floor. Blanche is laid out on the couch. It's another day. She's commiserating to Dorothy. 
Rose comes in and sets off the alarm. She rushed in because she was afraid, but it's just the gardener trimming the hedge. Rose asks Blanche what is wrong, and she launches into her story. She went to the police station and found an officer she wanted to flirt with while she was about to give them a sketch of the jewels that were stolen. And she spritzed her hair with hairspray that turned out to be mace. She thought that Rose had pocket hairspray, but it was self-defense spray. Blanche, your hairspray was mace. I maced myself right there in the police station. I almost died. I fell to the floor, blinded, writhing in pain, couldn't move for 20 minutes. Rose, well, what do you know? It works. Blanche, works? They thought I was on angel dust. They wanted to arrest me. I'm lying there dying and they're harassing me. Murderers are free. Rapists are free. But a poor widow on the floor, they try to lock up. Dorothy tells Rose no more mace or any of the other stuff. And she responds back that she doesn't need it anymore because she bought a gun. Dorothy is not happy. She attempts an intervention and suggests Rose go see a psychiatrist. Sophia takes this opportunity to mess with her. It's another day, and the four all go to see the psychiatrist together. They discuss their thoughts on the appointment afterwards. Rose says she doesn't feel any better, but she, she feels worse. And Dorothy points out that Rose is terrified. So terrified that she can't sleep at night anymore. Um, another night, late in the evening, Blanche comes home with a date. Rose doesn't know it's her, and she shoots because the alarm was set off. She misses Blanche and her date, but she hits the Chinese vase dead on, leaving it in hundreds of pieces. Rose then tells her she's sorry. Blanche, you shot my vase, Rose. At least I didn't shoot Lester. Blanche, I'd rather you shot Lester. Dorothy and Sophia come out to find what happened, find out what happened, and Dorothy takes the gun from Rose. Sophia gives a speech about the state of Rose's mind. Dorothy, what happened? Blanche, she shot my vase. Sophia, thank God, I hated that thing. Dorothy, what are you doing shooting? Are you crazy? Rose, I heard a noise. I thought it was the robbers. Sophia, I managed to live 80, 81 years. I survived pneumonia, two operations, a stroke. One night, I'll belch and stable Mabel here will blow my head off. Dorothy, Rose, you've got to do something. This is crippling you. Dorothy is now extremely concerned that Rose's fear is truly crippling her. Dorothy tells Rose the robbers are gone, but Rose breaks down, telling her that in her mind, the robbers will always be there. It's another day, and Rose is in a parking garage heading to her car. She thinks someone is following her, so she runs for it. But he follows her into the staircase. Then we cut to Dorothy and Sophia playing Scrabble on the lanai. Sophia gets a big word and a huge score, and Dorothy challenges her. Dorothy, Ma, this damn is not a word. You made it up. Sophia, it's a word. Dorothy, fine, use it in a sentence. Sophia, you're no good at this damn game. And Sophia exits the lanai triumphantly. Blanche comes out and tells Dorothy that the police got her mink stole back. Blanche goes on and on about her mother's jewels. Rose comes out on the lanai and tells them about the parking garage. He followed her and he grabbed her arm. She then dropped him like a sack of potatoes. It helped her realize she could take care of herself. Rose won't be pressing charges. It turns out he was the parking attendant bringing her her keys. Rose. But I'm not afraid anymore. I know that when it comes right down to it, I can take care of myself. Dorothy. Oh, honey, I always knew you could. Blanche comes back out talking about her jewelry again. She found it. It was in the freezer all along. I'll be right back after a quick break. Favorite quotes. Sophia, please, I'm 80. Bathtubs are dangerous. Rose, they were probably looking for drugs. Dorothy, we have Maalox and estrogen. Now how many robbers have gas and hot flashes? Dorothy, to the alarm salesman. Now get out of here before the victim of violent crime in this house is you. Dorothy, 
You could just have easily been murdered when you were with Charles. Sophia. I'm surprised she wasn't murdered by Charles. Rose. The dog. I think he ate your mother. Sophia. Some attack dog. He hid under the table, peed on the floor, and ran out the back. Sophia. One night I'll belch and stable Mabel here will blow my head off. Fun facts for this episode. The girls went to see Madonna. Their house got broken into and they were robbed. Dorothy tries to scare anyone still in the house by talking about having a gun, but she gets the caliber wrong and calls it a three seventy five Magnum instead of a three fifty seven Magnum. Blanche's jewels are gone. She hid them in the flower and in the freezer. Per Dorothy, the only drugs they have in the house are estrogen and Maalox. They get a guard dog. He doesn't work out. Dorothy suggests they see a psychiatrist. It helps everyone but Rose. Rose buys a gun. Rose actually fires the gun at who she thinks is someone breaking in, but it's actually Blanche's date, Lester, and Blanche. Rose winds up shooting the Chinese vase. Dorothy points out that Rose is a serious problem. Rose has an incident in a parking garage, and it helps her to get over her fear. Dorothy's stole is found by the police and returned. And Blanche's jewels were not missing. They were in the freezer the whole time. The effect that the robbery had on Rose is really the focal point of this episode. And for Rose, it actually became a psychological disability. And even a psychiatrist couldn't help until she actually proved to herself that she could stand up for herself and she could defend and protect herself. She could not get over this fear. She couldn't sleep at night. She thought the robbers were around every corner. It was really, really sad. And at the end, she she overcame this and she was able to get back to being herself again. But the fact that she literally was so afraid that mace and things of that nature weren't enough and she went and bought a gun and she couldn't even really use the gun. Still not sure if she knew how to load bullets into it or if the bullets were loaded by the person at the, at the gun store. But yeah, just really, really sad that she felt she had to go that far to defend herself. But the one question I do have is she bought that gun, but what happened to it? Because we don't actually ever hear about it again, nor do we see it again. But, technically speaking, Rose is a gun owner for the entire rest of the show. And, yeah, they all deal with it differently, and it's just, it's quite interesting. You know, Blanche gets over it, it seems, the fastest. She's just upset about her jewels, which, it turns out, were hidden in the freezer all along, and she just forgot where in the freezer she kept them, I guess? I'm really not sure there. And Dorothy, Dorothy bounced back pretty much immediately. I guess where she grew up, she was used to that kind of thing happening. Because she didn't act like it was a big deal at all. But I do love how Sophia tried to use the robbery to get an entire new wardrobe. I'm not sure if at some point we actually did see her get the clothes back or not wherever she hid them. But I know that she didn't get a new set of clothes. So she had to have broken down and taken them out of wherever she hid them. Now, I personally don't believe that, at least as an adult or within my memory, that I've had anyone break in. But I do know people that have had people break into their homes. And each person handled it differently, was affected by it differently. And it's just a matter of understanding that it was a one-off. And, and coming to terms with it and processing all of the emotions and the feelings that you have from it. And being able to move forward based on that. It's been great reliving this episode with you. Please check out the podcast website, anchor.fm forward slash I love this TV show, no spaces. You'll be able to see the show notes and also support this podcast. To check out everything I'm up to and nerding about, 
head over to pastasworld.com. You'll also find additional content there. Thanks for listening and stay golden.